All right. In this video, I'm going to speak to you about how racism works in Dubai. Okay. And uh, I'll tell you very specifically how it is existing and what you should be aware. Okay. And uh, yeah, if you feel I'm a hater or this is fake news or fake information, please don't watch the video. So I don't get traction and you know, you don't have to waste your time. But if you feel there's an element of truth in what I say, continue watching. And uh, you know, just for my regular viewers, uh, the video I'll be speaking a little slow because I've not eaten food for seven days. I've only been drinking water. So watch the video at 1x speed or 2x speed because um, I'll be a little, you know, when you don't eat food for seven days, it's not easy to walk and talk. And yeah, I'll be drinking water because I keep getting thirsty often. Okay, let's start the video and uh, feel free to put down your questions if you have any questions to ask me. Okay, now the first evidence, see, first things first. In, in the Middle East, or uh, anywhere in the Middle East, it's a known fact, not a guess, it's a known fact. All the local citizens get paid more for the same job than a non-citizen, okay, or an expat. For example, I'll give you, this is a real life example. In uh, this company, which is government, I'll not name it, neither will I name the person or the position, he's working in HR. He's an Emirati who is my client. And this is what he told me. Okay, this is when I was living in Dubai. I'll just give you rough figures so it's easy. For the same, same position, same position, okay? First comes uh, the lowest rung of the ladder, that is Bangladeshi or Sri Lankan or, uh, you know, African. Okay, these categories, they will pay you, say, a thousand dollars, okay, for example. So, a thousand dollars for a Bangladeshi, Sri Lankan, say, African or any uh, of the, you know, uh, countries where the currency is dirt cheap. The next level, okay, that is level one. Level two is where they will have, say, Pakistanis, Filipinos, okay, uh, Thai or Asians. They will get maybe 2,000, okay, 2,000 dirhams. Same job, same everything. Okay, it can more or less interchange, but I'm just giving an approximate. The third level comes Indians. They will get 3,000. The fourth level comes the first category of whites. And that can be you, uh, Russians or uh, Eastern Europeans, like, you know, uh, countries like... Uh, Azerbaijan and you know all these countries the next level after that is the educated Russians or the ones who have traveled abroad or uh, speak fluent English you know who are like well qualified and over there at the same level you get South African white and uh, they also consider Europeans the level higher than that is British, actual British, white British. It's not Pakistani who became British or Indian who became a British or a British citizen who looks like Indian or Pakistani, no. He should be white. Okay? So, means ancestors were also British. Next level after that is Americans or highly educated Australians, or highly educated British. 
here experience also comes into play okay ah oh, sorry i forgot the salaries um so at each level that i went no you can add up say another 1000 or 2000 so when i'm saying about say south africans and uh it goes 1000 more so by the time you come to these guys uh the americans educated british educated australians same job which was 1000 now same job huh? they will get paid maybe 9 or 10 okay it can go up to 15 finally when it comes to emirati okay it starts off with maybe 10 or 15 but along with 10 or 15 he will get all the perks and benefits he'll get insurance he'll get family status he'll get uh, bonuses he will qualify for all the extra perks okay and uh, it is no surprise that the emirati who will be there now this is the shocker he will mainly be someone who's a fresher someone who lacks the experience or the education as good as any of the lower levels and the best part is the guys below him will have to train him or what they do is they will have a manager who is from abroad mostly indian and uh, he will be asked to mentor and train this person so that he can take over the job one day in the future and here's the ironic part the let's say in one of the leading airlines i'll not name it which one my girlfriend used to work there very close i knew her for many years she used to get 15 as a manager the student who emirati student was employed to work under her knew nothing of the job absolutely nothing uh, but had a few few skills and yes was educated had a masters the student who was being trained by my girlfriend her salary was at 30 or 35 imagine the manager is 15 the student trainee or the junior obviously they'll not give the name trainee is 30 or 35 double plus she had all the perks car allowance house allowance uh you know they are even provided family allowance she was given even education allowance if she wanted to be trained under anything it was taken care of by the company but yes you have to sign a bond okay so this is a very explicit fact in not only dubai but all middle east countries it depends saudi is another one qatar is another one so where an indian would get say 10000 for the same job a emirati would get 35 50 just use your imagination now obviously it is their country their rules they want to support the citizens now if it was only salary it wouldn't be a problem but it goes far beyond that and i'll tell you this is where the problem starts for emiratis there is a different hr in most of the companies a different hr a different set of rules i don't know whether this rule applies even now but to encourage emiratis from having to have children to grow the population if a emirati female gets pregnant she is given maternity paid leave paid maternity leave in with the support of the government for one year so she will enjoy the salary while taking a one year maternity leave 
which obviously experts are not given. But where it proves to be irritating is, experts, obviously, it's not your country, so you have to come on time. Emiratis, it's a little flexible. They can come on time, but in multinational companies, they have to come on time. In government companies, only Dubai, uh, run by Sheikh Mohammed, they have to come on time. But other Emirates like Ajman, Sarja, uh, Abu Dhabi, the senior the guy is, he can come to the office. If check-in time is 8, he can come 10. No questions asked. And most of these guys, they'll come to the office and uh, they'll just delegate. They sit on their fat asses and they delegate. And uh, most of them who join new, they are not aware of the job. They don't know the job. They are not qualified for the job. They don't have the education qualifications, but they're given the job. And here's a funny thing. You are supposed to train them and you're held accountable for their performance. I know a manager of a company whom I helped get a job and mentored. He was given three Emirati young uh, students who graduated. They were decent, but they were not, you know, that sharp. Because obviously English is not their first language. Now, here's the funny thing. Every, <laughs> every email they would send had errors and problems. The manager was asked to actually look into their emails. And he was even instructed that to make sure that the emails are done well and guide them. And even if they made a mistake, the management expected him to sort it out. And uh, he was even asked after office hours, uh, or during office hours, sorry, during office hours, one to two hours to sit and train all these three. He had to train them, mentor them, coach them. And he had to present his reports to the management. What was the progress of his training? And uh, what's more is, obviously, they got a bigger salary than him, which was even funny. And imagine, this guy is driving, let's say he's driving a normal, say for example, Pajero. These three students were driving, one was driving a BMW, another one had a Lexus, third one had a American, I don't know, big ass, one of those heavy, Spec'd up guzzlers. I don't know what it was. So he's saying, what he told me is, in my wildest dreams, I wouldn't be able to afford this. So, yeah, well, it is what it is. Okay, so that is one. They are not expected to come on time. Well, they have to, but like I said, multinationals and government companies, especially Dubai, they have to come in time. The other thing is, if you have a fight with them or argument with them, by default, they, they are protected by the management. And most probably, if you argue with them, you can end up losing your job or you will be put on probation. If he is explicitly, the Emirati is explicitly wrong, they will just give him a slap on the wrist. They will suspend him for, this I speak from experience, huh? They'll suspend him for one or two days, paid leave. And uh, they'll, you know, the HR will talk to him very politely. They'll tell him, it's okay, you know, happens and this and that. And uh, after two days, come back and they'll request him, please, you know, don't uh, do this and that. Let's, uh, you know, juxtapose, compare it to an uh, expat. If an expat does that mistake, especially if he's Asian, oh, all hell will break loose. You will be called in as if you're a, uh, you know, in high school you have, if the principal wants to talk to you, he'll school you and they'll tell you, like, they wouldn't give a damn. They'll talk to you. I'm sorry, but we have to conduct an investigation. 
uh, will get back to you. All right. Until then, you are suspended. But if the if they were to call the Emirati, how are you, Abdullah? Okay, Abdullah, listen. I understand what is happening, and see uh, until the matter cools down, we have given you two days off. Okay, it's not a suspension; it's two days off. Just you get uh, two days off, relax, enjoy yourself, cool yourself down, and uh, we'll meet after two days. We just want you to relax. So, <laughs> my uh, one other client was working in HR. Uh, she was an assistant. She was witness to this. It's kind of funny how you know they talk to two people in two different ways. I also remember one of my white clients from the West when uh, the Emirati she had an Emirati working under her, and he had made a complete fool of himself by sending a very rude email and then making a big noise in the office. When she had to before she had to school him, she. Booked a session with me and said, "How do I handle this?" So I just told her, "See, listen. Don't take it personally, and don't use your emotions and feelings. Just remember, you need the job, you need the salary. When in Rome, do as uh, the Romans do. So talk to him in an understanding manner, but keep in mind that you need your job." So we practiced how she was going to talk to him, and on that day, she spoke to him, "Hey, how are you doing?" And she tried to be a little firm, but she said, "See, listen, we have to work together as a team. Okay, I need you. You're very important to this team." And uh, he said, uh, "You know, Yaki, I was doing. He's he's doing wallahi and this and the." Stop the law! I wouldn't do like I'm Muslim and blah blah. They always bring out the trump card. Either they are Muslim or they are Emirati or when they get angry, they say I'm local. Okay, I am local, and they'll beat their chest and say, "Local, I don't even have the energy to do that. I'm local. I'm local." Okay, I I should tease uh, not directly. I'm international. Yeah, that got me into trouble. So she said that, and that was it. You know, later on when she called me up and said, "You know, Loy, uh, had it been somebody else, I wouldn't have talked to him in this manner. The amount of damage that he did. Anybody else, I would have said, you know, this is unacceptable. You know, you'll we'll have to, you know, really look into this." Or in some cases, you she even told me. In some cases, uh, I tell that guy you're fired. You know, I'm sorry, but I don't want you in my team. But with this guy, you have to talk very politely. You you can see this when there are get-togethers or meetings. Whenever they talk to locals, they will talk very politely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they will laugh. Now the Emiratis, they are very aware of all this. That is why whenever you see a lady. What she'll do in the bank? You go to a bank. I've said this before. You meet the lady at the bank, and you talk to her, and you ask her a question. She'll always keep adjusting. Uh, uh. She'll adjust her scarf once, mm. yes, and then she'll type and again uh, adjust her scarf again, and type and then uh, uh. she'll keep doing this every few minutes. Sometimes you wish you could take a stapler and staple it <laughs> right to her head. And then, when they are doing that, especially if it's a local bank, they'll be a Fatima. Where, where in the bank? Where? Maria, my little baby, baby. What is it? Shoe in the back, in the left. And if it's a guy who is a male working, he will come with his nice AirPods and his mobile phone. Oh, yeah, Harif, yeah, 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 yeah. Shoe, sure, shoe sure in the back, and he'll casually walk through the bank. Not giving a damn about anyone, and he'll sit. And when any come, yes, how can I help you? And he'll chew gum. Hmm. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Not all. Some of them even do this. This I have experienced. And then when they're doing the work, there's no hurry. They look left. They'll talk. If they get a call, they'll take the call. 
so there is no accountability and see the biggest reason for all this there is no fear why there is no fear because it is their own country unlike expats who will lose their job and get their visa cancelled and then they have to go back to their own country if they don't have a job emirati is that, that is their own country they lose their job this they don't care and biggest thing is the government has made it a very important mandate if you terminate a emirati you will have to give if the emirati complains to the labor or ministry you will be summoned you the organization the hr in some cases the md or the ceo and you'll have to give an explanation why were they terminated on what basis what grounds you will be held accountable and uh, i do not know how they sorted out but i'm told that if you can't make your case because by default they'll support him you'll have to pay a severance package and you'll be given a warning and you'll be given some you know as a businessman you'll be given a couple of black points for a visa and you'll also be given a penalty you have to take another emirati in his place and in some cases they even have to pay the salary until this guy gets another job so there's you know a lot of fear now here's one thing you need to know you will not find all this in the newspaper or media nobody talks about it because of the strict media laws but if you want to know whether what i'm saying is true or false speak to anybody who's working speak to a you know whatever expat everyone knows this but they'll never talk about it the funny thing is the government itself has made a mandate that if an emirati finishes diploma they'll get a slab if they complete a degree they get a higher slab if they complete a masters they'll get a much more higher slab and that is a guaranteed minimum salary uh, i'm aware that degree holders can get a first job fresher 10000 and above but that is only in select government companies and in multinationals 10000 by default diploma may be 9 or 8 degree holder uh, sorry masters 15 and above phd oh definitely 20 and above okay the women are generally more educated and more studious than the men the men very rarely but the ones who do study they make it a point to go overseas to the west their most preferred uh, is uk or they go to usa and i'll tell you the ones who are smart are dynamic they are very fluent in english they are very fluent in mannerisms they are like ceo material but they are paid astronomical it's crazy to give you a default a head of let's say a department head of it head of cyber security head of hr let's say his salary is 10000 dollars i'll give you an example or let's say 20000 dollars you can multiply it 3 times to 5 times more what a emirati will get you can multiply it 3 uh, times to 4 times for an american or a gora passport holder but if you are one of those indians and pakistanis who has a white passport and you have that action hi how are you doing my name is ankur sharma yeah, if you have that kind of the thing hi my name is uh, you know whatever mohammed <laughs> ekbal i'm from canada or whatever yeah you can get double or three times the salary and i know this because i have made uh, not only their profiles i coach them for the interview and the position there are many people who from a indian passport they go to canada which is the most preferred location of australia get the gora passport and then go to the middle east so where they were offered 1000 bucks because of the white passport now suddenly they are offered 5000 bucks like you know i'm just giving multiples of 
and uh, i know one guy personally who before in uh, dubai uh, he was getting let's say i think 5000 dirhams after he got his canadian citizenship and he worked on his accent and all that same guy govan he went to saudi imagine he is getting around 26 or last i checked with him he got 35 and he has opened up a weed shop in canada so that's another surprise so overall i know what you say oh shit yeah so is dubai a bad place no it is not if you mind your own business and focus on what you are earning what you are getting before versus what you are getting now that's all that matters who gets what is their business yeah it is a bit hurting and you feel you feel terrible if you're working for a company you join you're getting say 10000 and a new b joins who knows even maybe 20% of what you know and you're getting 10 and he's getting 30 35 of course he'll kill you but then again that's a game you have to play so overall what i want to tell you is there is corporate racism in dubai and yes never take a emirati to court never have a legal case against a emirati you lose and it's always better to be in the good books of an emirati but no matter how good you are with them how nice how friendly they are never your friend they will talk to you they'll take you out for food they'll my brother you are like my brother your family allah kalli you know you know kya ki kam 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 ah uh, yeah they'll do all that for you but when push comes to shove they'll show you a side of theirs you'll regret the day you're born so yeah overall just keep in mind dubai is a good place you just focus on what you were getting before and what you're getting paid now or what you're getting offered but just keep in mind what you're getting offered okay what you are getting offered same position if a emirati were to get offered 3 to 5 times your salary plus all the benefits are overly hyped and yes bonus uh, extended leave compensatory leave uh promotions the first priority is them just to put a little bit of whitewash they will open up the vacancy to everyone but then they have a very strict mandate by default high salaries emiratis especially where government is concerned semi government is concerned multinational companies are concerned and yes where uh, large scale companies are concerned small scale companies now they made it mandatory to employ one or two locals which is a big challenge for them but then you get the gist so overall this is the scenario of corporate racism in uae let me know if you have any questions put them down below and uh, if you don't believe what i'm saying please check and ask some person who has been in uae for many years and you'll realize what i'm saying is true just remember emirati in his own country is god is powerful nobody can touch them okay good bad ugly feel free comment down below this is me saying off you guys take care